Well, it is five o'clock on the 1st of January 2021 and I'm sitting here on my own in our studio recording a New Year podcast. Now, you would think, you would think that I would have pre-recorded this so that I could simply press go. But hey, why break the habit of a lifetime? I'm Paul and this is the Mastering Portrait Photography podcast. Hello, one and all. I have to say, of course, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Now, um, it's kind of grey and cold. The studio is icy because, of course, we've knocked the heating back uh, and we haven't been here all week. And so it's it's really pretty chill, chilly. Uh, Harriet, our daughter, is convinced that we're going to see some snow. But at the moment, to add to many of the woes of being in a tier four lockdown, <laughs> we appear to be one of the few bits of the country that hasn't had snow. Now, normally, just like my father uh, and his father, I'm sure, uh, before him, I usually lament snow. So the kids get excited about it and I do the grumpy dad thing. You know, remember kids, people die in the snow. You can't get to work. It damages our business, blah, 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 blah. You know the kind of dad stuff that you do. Well, this year, and to be fair, I love the snow, so I don't know why I do it. I think it's just a, a, a habit. Uh, but this year, of course, with everything being locked down, I too would love it to be cold, crisp and white because it's not like we're doing any work just for a minute and it would be good fun uh, to be able to go and do a bit of sledging and just to look out the window and for it to be scenic. Now, of course, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you are more or less on your midsummer's day, give or take uh, about a week or so. Uh, and so you're probably just having a barbecue thinking, what on earth am I on about? And uh, we do actually have clients all over the world, or listeners rather, to the podcast all over the world. And so, yes, <laughs> I understand the picture uh, that I'm painting might not chime with you. But listen to this again in June uh, and see, maybe maybe some of that will chime with you. Uh, however, the studio may be cold. It is very quiet, but is absolutely full of Christmas cards. And I have to say thank you to everyone who sent us a card. Uh, two more arrived this morning. Well, I guess they were here during the week. Uh, I think our post lady, I don't think she's been very well because she hasn't been doing the rounds at all. Uh, and instead of them putting somebody else on, I think they must have been short staffed because uh, about two days after Christmas, we got through our letterbox at home a huge wadge of uh, family Christmas cards. Uh, which apparently had just taken an additional week to arrive. Uh, we hadn't had any post at all, uh, except for delivery drivers. So I'm assuming she hasn't been well. So it's lovely to see her smiling and back doing the rounds. Uh, also, while we're doing thank yous, uh, let me do this one up front. I want to say thank you again for all of the various messages that we get or I get uh, from listeners of this podcast. Um, I, as, as I try to do when I can, I'm going to single someone out. Now, this one came in on Facebook Messenger. Now, <laughs> if, if you ever email me on Facebook or DM me on Instagram or any of the social media channels, be aware that I do my damnedest not to be on social media for an awful lot of the time. Um, I still find it really hard uh, basically, everyone is either having an amazing time or is angry. I've said this over and over again, and that is the two modes of social media. Hey, look at me! Or hey, you're a git. Uh, one or the other, and I really find it just troublesome. I know that's not what all of the people are on there are actually like, but you know what it's like. You dip into one message, and then before you know it, you're scrolling down, liking or arguing in your head with or being jealous of or wondering how they've got to do that when I haven't. And I just find that it's not, it's two things. Firstly, I don't deal with that very well in my head, so I stay away from it when I can. And the other is that no matter how badly I deal with it in my head, I also know it's not true. And yet here, there I am being suckered into it. So I, I don't, I, I do, go, obviously we do have social media. Every business has social media. Uh, and because it's just a team of three of us, I look after a chunk of it as does Sarah. Uh, but I'm not a natural, it's not a natural fit for me. So apologies if you do email me or message me rather on any of those particular channels. Uh, it may take me a minute to pick them up and get back to you. This one came from Stephen in London. 
and I'm going to read it out. It just says, uh, just reaching out with a few messages to people that have kept me going this year. So big thanks for the podcasts, Paul. I know you don't really know me and it must be quite weird with emails out of the blue. I can only imagine, similar to yourself being in a band years ago for myself and strangers coming up to you and wanting to be best mates after gigs. It's a nice to fe- it's a nice feeling rather that you can have an influence like that for yourself. Anyway, happy new year and stay safe. So I just I'm reading it out because actually it's lovely to get a message like that. And yes, I don't really know uh, Stephen particularly. Uh, I don't really know an awful lot of the people who message me in, but it doesn't. It's not weird. It's lovely. Because when you reach out on a podcast like this, it's just me and a microphone. Literally, literally, I'm sitting here in front of a screen. So I've got my crib sheet sitting in front of me. Uh, I've got a microphone. I've got a pair of headphones on. And that is the sum total of it. Basically, I'm talking to myself and hoping that in some time, <laughs> at some point in the future, somebody else will hear it. And so when we get messages back, it means there are people hearing it. It means... It is worth us doing it because it does take up a huge amount of time and cost. And, you know, it's meant to be a help. It's meant to be the thing. The reason we do the podcast, the reason we do Mastering Portrait Photography is that so many people helped me to put together my skills and my business and the strength we needed to make the transition from working in the city and the jobs that we had to doing what we now do, which is this absolute privilege to earn our living and feed our family by taking pictures. People helped me. Some people we paid, some people we still pay. Some people do it for the sheer love of helping. And this podcast and masteringportraitphotography.com is entirely in that vein. So when we get an email back from Stephen that says what it says, trust me, it has helped make my Christmas. It was just a lovely note. So thank you, Stephen. Thank you to everybody else. I can't read them all out. There simply isn't time. But that one just chimed with me. Well, he used the reference to being in a band. Uh, and I don't actually remember anyone really wanting to be my best mate after a gig. I was the drummer. So when everyone else was being best mates with the vocalist, the guitarist, the keyboard player, the backing vocalists, you name it, pretty much everybody else, there'd be me and possibly the bass player lifting kit into a van or into a car and by the time we got to the bar most people were heading away you know and so I don't remember too much of being uh, chased around after gigs in my in my dreams maybe but it never when I actually sit and remember it was never quite like that Uh, anyway on to the thread of this particular podcast and I wasn't I'm still not entirely sure where to take the thread do we say goodbye to 2020 Or do we say hello to 2021? Now, the problem is there's lots of people saying, let's kick 2020 into touch and let's celebrate 2021. But you really don't have to be particularly good at maths to realise that 2021 is going to be, well, it's just the day after yesterday. And to get the vaccinations, which is what we're all hanging on to, isn't it? I mean, at the end of the day, if the vaccinations work, we will get this thing corrected. We will get corrected. COVID-19 to be another background thing like measles or flu or whatever. Um, But right now, we've still got an uphill battle. You know, in the UK, they're talking about doing a million vaccinations a week. Well, that's still 30 weeks. That's 30 weeks before enough of the population are inoculated to have a proper effect. They need to They need to vaccinate half the population. We have about 60 million people, a million a week. The maths is not complicated. But that does mean we've got 30 weeks. That's over half a year before we can get to that herd immunity. Now, I know I've I've seen other um, projections that say they're going to do much more than that. And here's hoping that that turns out to be the case. But based on the track record of this government so far... I wouldn't be wanting to bet my business on it. Now, I know that maybe that sounds pessimistic and I don't mean it to be because I'm not really. I'm quite an optimistic kind of guy. Truthfully, I'm someone who always thinks we'll succeed. I have a belief system. My parents gave it me. I'm blessed with it. I've always had this inner resolve and this sort of confidence, I suppose, to know that I can figure this out. But equally as a business owner... I have to take the pessimistic view or at least 
have a pessimistic view alongside the optimistic views because we've got to do our cash flow. We've got to do the business planning. We've got to do the things that every business owner has to do. So on the one hand, this podcast, there's lots of amateur enthusiasts and people who just love portrait photography listen to this. You don't necessarily need to worry in the same way that we do about running a small business. But then equally, I know an awful lot of the people listening are like me. They run either a one-man or a two-man or a three-man small photography outfit based almost entirely on people's ability to spend money. So we do plan those projections. I do look at the data. On the flip side of that, though, on the flip side of that, let's have a look at the positives because there are now lots of business analysts, myself included, not that I'm a business analyst these days, that, that particular career. I wasn't ever particularly good at that part of it anyway, uh, but that side of me uh, is is in the past. However, however, there is now plenty of chatter and some indicators that when we eventually come out of this, it'll be a little bit like the roaring 20s. Everybody, everybody is going to want to celebrate to some degree. Now, of course, that's mixed with all of the heartbreaking stories that are going on at the moment. But again, as a business owner, we have to hope that at least some of that trickles down into this sector. The fact that people value family more than ever and they want to get out and do something exciting and interesting. Well, here's hoping uh, that that's the way it goes. So I'm tempering my slightly pessimistic view of a million a week with this light at the end of the tunnel for a small business like ours uh, that people are going to want to celebrate and we need to be in a position to deal with that when it happens Uh, so anyway that's kind of going to look forwards I think to 2021 in terms of 2020 I think I started last year by saying I had to a degree lost my mojo and I was on a bit of a crusade for creativity Um, well of course that didn't quite pan out and in the end Well, in the end, I think the various lockdowns spurred me on uh, to a degree. And I did, I guess, create a decent body of work, particularly given the reduced number of sessions and the almost complete lack of weddings. I don't know how many weddings we've done this year. It's a number I probably should know off the top of my head. I think it's six. Uh, Next year, well, if, if everything goes the way it could go, we'll be doing an awful lot more. Uh, But I did also weirdly spend quite a lot of 2020 feeling a bit burnt out. And that's ironic given actually we've done less work this year than any other year since I turned pro. So why burnt out? Well, the best thing I can think of is it's an analogy. And I told this story the other day and I'd not really thought about the parallels, but um, when I was doing my PhD, we worked with uh, a tyre company in the UK, a well-known global brand. And we were looking at putting microphones in their test rig to hear just before a tire exploded. Now, they had a test rig, which was basically a very big steel drum. Uh, It must have been about six or eight feet uh, diameter, which is a rolling road. Uh, They then had a wheel with a tire on it that they drop onto the top of this thing, onto the side of this thing, with the same pressure as it would carry on a road, whether it was a car or a lorry tire. And then they'd run it at like 100 mile an hour until the tyre exploded. And then they go into this forensic mode to try and figure out why the tyre design would fail the way it did. Now, ideally, what they wanted to do was stop this rig at the moment before the tyre destroyed itself. Because then they didn't need to go and pick up all the pieces and put them in a lab. What they could actually do is have a look at the tyre and figure out where it was about to explode. There is a point to this story, honest. So they had this rolling road, 100 miles an hour, tire onto the rolling road. After a period of time, boom. And we were training neural networks. We were training, we were using machine learning. My PhD was in this. And we were developing a system that would listen to the way the sound changed over time and predict the failure point and stop the tire just before it was due to go pop. The thing about this story is that the tire would go pop after about 15 minutes and I sat with the guys and I looked at them and said hang on a minute 100 mile an hour the tire will explode at 15 minutes that's scary you can't drive a car for only 15 minutes before a tire explodes how come they go so quickly because clearly you don't have to be a scientist to realize you can drive a car for a lot longer than 15 minutes before your tires explode even at 100 mile an hour Not that I have, of course. Uh, And they said, yeah, it's because you don't get the cooling effect 
of air as the car is actually traveling. We're, everything here is stationary. The rolling road is spinning, but the air is stationary. And because you don't have the cooling effect and the normal kind of variations of airflow that you get on the road, the tire gets hot and it explodes. So it's not a perfect system. Uh, but we need them to, to blow up quickly because we're testing them. We don't actually want to cool them down. So we're quite happy with that. That's the point. This last year, I think I spent a lot of it trying to run at 100 mile an hour. And I can do that. I'm built that way. I can work crazy hours. It doesn't worry me. I can do it for months on end. Eventually, I need some sleep. Uh, or I need to get a holiday or go for a cruise or something. <laughs> when I say cruise, I mean working on a cruise. But I can cope, and I can cope because when you're working with your clients, when you're working in a business for real, you get the cooling effect of the wind that that brings. Your clients are the tempering. They're the bit that makes it all okay. You can take all of these pictures. You can work long hours. I can spend days in front of a, a computer getting through a series of gigs so that everyone has their images on time. But then we get the bit of the puzzle. We get the dialogue with the clients. We get obviously the cash flow coming through the business. We get the feedback. And that in total gives us basically the cooling effect. And during the first lockdown, I think I tried to carry on working at that pace. But of course, we had no clients. I was working on the website. I was working on MPP and mastering portrait photography. I was doing this. I was doing that. I was up at 6.30. I'd be in the studio by 8.30. You know, and actually all that, that happened was I felt exhausted. So the first lockdown was that. The second lockdown, well, I think the second lockdown was a bit more depressing uh, because it was a bit later on. But this time, this third time, it is dark, cold and wet. I don't think Harriet's right. I don't think we're going to have any snow. And we certainly don't have Christmas now to look forward to. Not that actually we did have much of a Christmas to look forward to because in a tier four lockdown, uh, it was just us and the family. And on that note, I had one of the nicest Christmases I've ever had. I loved it. It was nice. It was just the four of us. We laughed. We drank. We ate. We cooked. We made sure Bob, our next door neighbour, had his Christmas dinner. <laughs> we did all of the things. It's just nice to do. And yes, I missed the family. Of course I did. I loved being around everybody. I certainly missed the many friendships and going out for a drink and all the things that the run into Christmas is. But Christmas Day itself, well, it was just... It was just lovely. However, during this particular lockdown, this is going to go on for a while, probably six to eight weeks at the guess. This time, I feel completely at ease with the situation. Sarah, my wife, always my hero, has done our cash projections. And I know it's going to be tight, you know, but she thinks more or less we'll be fine for the year, even if we don't do, even if we're having to battle it out with lockdowns and can't work. It's going to be tight and there won't be an awful lot in the way of investment, even though my iMac screen is gradually turning purple from the bottom up. You know, I've got a second calibrated screen. I mean, both screen, screens are calibrated, but that purple tinge is definitely not part of the calibration. And so I know we've got to invest. I know my camera's beyond its serviceable life. Uh, I know that because Nikon told me last time I had it serviced. Uh, but one way or another, I know we can survive. And so... I'm actually really at ease with it. The first lockdown, scary. The second, depressing. This one, well, this one, we'll, fit, we'll, we'll see, I guess. And I'm kind of finding comfort in learning some new skills. Now, I know everyone all year, talked, I've seen these articles. Oh, I learned German in a week. Uh, I became a Pilates instructor. I took up mountaineering or whatever it is that people did in the last couple of lockdowns I didn't really do anything uh, I did quite a lot of work inside the business but this time I'm learning something new uh, I am getting my head around some 3d modeling software which I have wanted to do uh, for probably five or six years and every time I've dipped into this one particular package I haven't managed to get my head around it it's just been just out of reach um, you know you need to spend a certain amount of time and a certain amount of dedication to learn skills like that uh, and I've really wanted to do it. And well, this time I found the headspace. I found the headspace in the run into Christmas uh, a little bit. And then between Christmas and New Year, uh, I really have managed to unlock some of the barriers, most of the barriers that I had into getting my head around it. 
Uh, I guess you might want to know, <laughs> might want to ask, why on earth does a photographer need or want to use 3D software? Well, part of it is just an intellectual puzzle. It just fascinates me. Uh, but there are some bigger benefits. Uh, we are producing a whole series of lighting diagrams uh, at the moment for Professional Photography Magazine. Each of those diagrams is built in 3D software. And with what I've just, the journey that I'm on at the moment learning means we can create much more complicated much more accurate lighting diagrams uh, and then spin off some interesting uh, bits and pieces uh, as an aside from that. Uh, also, uh, when we show clients uh, their images in a slideshow, I want, and um, we've built quite a few of those. These are available uh, on masteringportraitphotography.com, these room sets, and I want them to be better. I want them to be more useful. Um, we sell them. They're on the store over there, uh, but really they were built for me. Uh, the, the mastering portrait photography is essentially a brain dump of lots of things that I have found useful and I hope other portrait photographers might find useful, particularly if you're in business. And so that's it. So that's what we're doing. Well, that's what I'm doing. Uh, and I'm really, really enjoying doing it beyond enjoying it. I'm loving it. I'm loving the intellectual challenge. Uh, I'm loving actually having to push myself. I've got my notebooks out again. I'm having to sit with notebooks and a pen and every time I learn something, write it down just as if I was in a lecture at a university 30 years ago <laughs> because, uh, well, I mean, these days if I walk into a room, I better have written down why I went to the room or else I'll forget I've got to that age. So writing stuff down is fairly normal, but this is quite intense and I'm absolutely uh, loving it. And so I'll keep you posted on that uh, as to how far I get, but hopefully you will see the results uh, as I start to produce them. Um, in other news, anyway, that's the, so that's me on lockdown. In other news, a uh, huge shout out to the team at the Royal Institution of Great Britain. Uh, those of you who have listened to the podcast and know me know I do the behind the scenes photography for them. Now this year, very weird because there was no audience. It was just a TV crew, uh, the scientists and me. Uh, working it so incredible lectures though all about the planet that we live on the damage we're doing and some of the science behind it uh, professor chris jackson oh i can't even say it uh, professor chris jackson dr helen chertsky and dr tara shine each did one episode which is unusual for us usually it's one lecturer over three but they each took one uh, episode they're on bbc4 they're on the iplayer they're a great watch, particularly if you have young people around and are trying to encourage them in science, because uh, that's what it's for. The Christmas lectures are all meant for um, uh, young people. Uh, this year is the first time since the lectures were, were conceived back in 18-something oh, um, by Faraday himself without an audience. We had no audience. We just had some screens that had a Zoom, uh, you know, Zoom cameras, and there were kids from various schools on there. So it's very, very different. The shooting was really hard because of that. Because there was no audience, the production team decided to do the whole thing is almost in the round, which if you're the photographer and not part of the camera team is really tricky because I kept finding myself looking up and seeing a red light from my camera looking straight at me. Uh, so it was it was a little bit more tricky than normal, but we got through it and I created some pictures that I'm really happy with. And certainly they're now on the BBC site and they're in the press and things. So it's really nice to do. Uh, so, uh, as always, a huge inspiration. Uh, one aside on that, and you had to admire this. Because they were using Zoom uh, to get the audience in, every student would have to log in or class a class of students would log in and then they'd be on the screens. And you just know, in one school, the teacher had asked some one of the kids, can you log us in and give us a name? Because... Obviously, you know, your name will appear on the TV and so the the school and this would have been me. You just know this would have been me. I'd have got into trouble. But it would have been me. One of the kids is going, no, oh, no worries. So I'll do that. They've logged them in and they've given their school the name. And I kid you not, twat. That's it. It just said twat. And you know, you just know <laughs> that there's a school kid somewhere. 15, 14, 15 years old, he's really techie, but the teacher isn't, has logged him in, and the teacher hasn't even been aware of it. I took a photograph of it just before the production team, who have also noticed, are desperately emailing the teacher saying, please, can you get them to change their name to your school name? <laughs> and shortly afterwards, shortly afterwards, one thing I know was the name was changed, and the bit that I'm speculating 
is that who, which, whichever child, whichever child that was, was hauled outside a headmaster's office to explain him or herself. <laughs> but it was very funny, and it just took me straight back to being a naughty child who's in trouble. Because, yep, that would have been me. Uh, so here we are. We're looking forward to next year. Now, I'm not one for New Year's resolutions, if I'm honest, because I never keep them. If you're going to change something, change it today. Don't wait till New Year. I mean, why would you wait? Just crack on and make a change. Uh, it's, it's good to have a trigger to start something, but in the end, it's you that has to make it. So, and, and this year in particular, I just know there's much that I cannot change, but the little I can, well, I'll have a go at that. Uh, but what I am so, so grateful for here is that this little team of mine, Sarah, Michelle, and myself, is holding together beautifully. Now, I know we're shut down at the moment and we kind of have to, we're dancing the dance with lockdowns and tier this and tier that and furloughing um, what we can and can't do. And when eventually I've worked all of that out, both from a legal and a complete safety point of view, hopefully we better do some work. But what I do know is each time we're back together as a team, it is such, such a joy to all be in the now, I hear a lot of talk that working from home is going to be the new normal. But honestly, honestly, I don't really agree. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. I hear it. Maybe I am just a Luddite. Maybe that's true. But I've always thought, actually, I'm pretty techy. So I'm completely okay. I mean, I can work from home happily. When I say happily, I don't mean happily. I mean, I have the capability. But I need to be around people. We need to be around people. I went for a walk yesterday or two days ago with Sarah and on the top of a hill there's a gang of blokes sitting on a bench drinking beers breaking all of the rules and you only have to see that to know that we're hardwired to be near people to actually have social interaction. We need that social contact. You know last night for New Year Sarah and I had the privilege of having a Zoom call with some of the nicest people in this industry. We drank, we chatted and we laughed. It was truly magical. It was a wonderful new year, but in the end, it can never quite replace being in the same room. The myriad little conversations and the asides, the sounds of everyone laughing and, of course, being able to hug. I'm a hugger. I've admitted it and I miss it. I hope if there's one thing that 2021 brings back, it's me, well, not just me, it's people being able to hug again because I miss it so here it is here's to 2021 may it be in one way, one way or another a different one to 2020 but one thing is certainly true may the friendships that I've built through this year remain and be joined by many others thank you to everyone who has listened to the end of this podcast the first podcast of 2021 it does make recording this podcast so very worthwhile and remember, whatever else, be kind to yourself. Take care.